Hi, my name is Zai, and I've been playing Quake for over 17 years. I've also tested over 50 gaming mice, so I'm going to try to make this choice as easy as possible for you. But remember, there's no such thing as a perfect mouse, and everyone is different. It's still going to be a hard choice. So let's look at the four main points of the Phoenix Vitesse. It's an ergonomic mouse with a 3310 optical sensor, armor on switches, and it weighs about 90 grams. That's a great start. Now to get into the details. There is a fairly deep thumb groove on the left, two side buttons, and a ledge to assist while picking it up. On the right side, it flares out a little bit at the base, with only a very small ledge above it. For people who like to have their fingers touching the mouse pad, this is not comfortable. But for people who want a small ledge to keep their fingers above the mouse pad, this could be quite good. It's easy enough to pick up, but because of the ledge at the base, it's not as safe a shape as it seems. On top, there are some nice grooves in the buttons for comfort, and at the back, it tapers in, so there's not much to rest the palm on if you have medium to large hands. The grip width is under 6cm, and the base length is about 11cm, so it's a bit off the usual 2 to 1 ratio, and that seems to be common among mice made for claw grip, which I think this might suit best. The button slope is gradual, and the hump is mostly central, so it has elements of all three grips. Personally, I seem to be holding it in a hybrid of all of them. My fingers are slightly arched, and my palm is only sometimes on the mouse. That's with a hand that's about 18 by 9 centimeters. So as a rough guide, I'd say this mouse would be decent for palm grip for people with hands between 15 and 17.5 centimeters. Claw grip, I'd say 16 to 19.5, and fingertip, 18 to 20. Again, that's a rough guide, not exact. Everyone is different. Moving on to the buttons, here is a listen to the clicks. The left and right buttons are light to press in and have a fair bit of tactile feedback with no noticeable delay or speed decrease, but they are a bit loud. I'm still trying to work out which buttons are best for jitter clicking, but it's possible that these are good. Mouse 3 is very low and it's a bit tight, but it's easy enough to press in. The mouse wheel is fairly quiet both ways, with a fairly obvious step, while still maintaining a smooth scroll, so it should be good for gaming and browsing. The side buttons feel like they're high quality, perfect for office use, but unfortunately, due to the travel distance, they're not really made for gaming. I hope in the next mouse that they reduce this distance. They're still usable, but not the best. And the DPI buttons feel responsive and good. And because they're tight, it should be hard to accidentally click them in. Overall, the buttons are quite good. Suitable for FPS and MOBA, but just like on one of my favorite mice, the side buttons need to be addressed. Now let's talk the implementation of the 3310 sensor. I'm going to show you the tests at 1800 DPI, but I've tested it at 400 and 800 too, and I didn't find a problem. So first, just rocket jumping. No problem here. Now to check if I can make it spin out using fast flicks. And of course, I can't. And there's no easy way to check how responsive it is, but it feels quite snappy to me. Zooming all the way in to check tracking, pixel by pixel at first, then speeding up, and it's all good there. I couldn't find any acceleration or deceleration either. My crosshair returns to the point. The liftoff distance is just over 1 DVD, and on a hard pad, it's actually 3 DVDs, so quite high, amazingly. It's a good performance by the sensor, but I do recommend using this with dark cloth pads. In the line test, 1800 dpi, window sensitivity 6 out of 11, we see no jitter, no skipping, and no angle snapping. There is no sensor rattle, and the liftoff movement is well controlled. As always, no problems with the 3310 in the line test. As for the build quality, on the sides is a smooth plastic, and it hasn't slipped at all so far, but I'm not sure about with sweaty hands. On top is a nice rubberized material, no wear and tear yet, so that's a good sign. When tapping it, it sounds hollow because of the low weight materials, but when shaking it, there's an obvious rattle. It's not sensor rattle, but it could be the lens or something loose inside. I've held down all the buttons, and that didn't stop it. The cable is about 1.5 meters long, and it's stiff rubber, which may get in the way, so you might want to get a mouse bungee to use with it. There are two large mouse feet on the base, they glide smoothly over the pad, and there's a replacement set in the box. There is no software, but you can cycle through the DPI steps, which are 400, 800, 1800, 3200, and 5000. The odd thing there is 1800 instead of 1600. Most mice with a 3310 will have a 1600 step instead. However, I have been told that they might address this with software someday. On that note, the mouse is using 500Hz polling rate instead of 1000, 
I still haven't done tests showing a significant difference between the two, so for me it doesn't really matter. Buttons cannot be reassigned, but the LED light switches off with the computer. Now here are some highlights while I give my conclusion. It has a lot of good points and a few bad, as is common with most mice. I like that it's lightweight, although the construction may suffer a little from it. The sensor performs well, despite the high liftoff distance on hard pads. And the buttons feel good, except the travel on the sides. I like the materials, but the shape is the biggest point on this mouse. For some, it might be very comfortable. For others, it will be awkward. I think claw grippers will like it the most, but that's for hands between 16 and 19.5 centimeters. So I'm not sure how many times I'll recommend it. We'll see how it goes over the next month or so. Until then, if you do buy this mouse, please let me know what you think. I'd like to thank Phoenix for sending this out for a review, and I hope this sells well enough so they continue making mice. And of course, I hope this review has helped you in your decision. Be sure to check the description for the usual links. And if you want mouse recommendations, please visit my website and use the search. So thanks for watching, like this video, and I'll catch you in the next.